We're making fajitas tomorrow. So today we're going to marinate our skirt steak. And I just want to walk you through how to do that. Let's start, but first let's wash our hands. So we have three total pounds of skirt steak. They've all been washed. The silver skin have been removed and patted dry. Our onions have also been chopped and the rest of our ingredients have all been pre-measured. So let's get started. You need a quarter cup of freshly squeezed orange juice. Same amount, pineapple juice. Two tablespoons lime or lemon juice. This is four tablespoons of olive oil, and this is cooking olive oil. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. A teaspoon of freshly minced garlic, which should come to about four large cloves of garlic. Next, you want a handful of sliced or chopped onions a tablespoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of cumin, teaspoon onion powder, salt to taste, a teaspoon of crushed black pepper. And that is all she wrote. Now stir it to combine. Now we're going to throw our steak in. Our skirt steak is perfectly submerged and also evenly coated. We're going to cover it, throw it in the fridge overnight. Hello, beautiful people. So it is the next day. Our skirt steak has been marinating in the fridge overnight. We're now going to bring it out here, set it on the counter, bring it to room temperature, and we'll be grilling that soon. Leave it closed partially, it'll come to room temperature much sooner. For the fajitas, we're going to need four bell peppers. The more I sort of the colors, the better. So I start with the green and I'm just going to give them a slice. We're going to use a seasoned skillet for grilling our skirt steak today, our fajitas, but you can also use a grill pan. Now you want to turn the heat to medium high and bring the skillet to a piping heat level before we grill. Our skillet is ready. We know that because it is smoking. We're going to go in with cooking oil. Here I have cooking olive oil and we only need a splash of it, just a very small amount. So we're cooking three minutes on each side and that's going to get it to a medium well doneness. Next, 
we have to slice our steak, which has been resting for the past 25 minutes. We're just going to slice them against the grain of the strands of the mussel. So that way they are not chewy, but rather tender and melt in your mouth. So the grain is going this way. We're gonna cut it right here in the middle. And then we're gonna turn it and start slicing against the grain. Now we could have cut them before cooking, but then we would not get all this juiciness because the citrus we added, remember we added a lot of acid from the lemon juice, the lime juice, and the orange juice. So that tends to dry it out. So you want to leave them in their whole slap portions. That way the juices stay contained and not dried out. We want juicy pieces of meat. Now back into its drippings. All right, beautiful people. So our rice is cooked. Our steak is also cooked, it's juicy, and it it's melting in my mouth. I tried it, it's well seasoned. I am super happy. So now, the next thing we're going to do is cook the vegetable part of our fajitas, and then we'll be serving the best part. Now, remember the marinade? We still have it. We have to cook it and sort of reduce it to concentrate its flavors. So that's the next thing we're doing. So it's now, now starting to reduce. This is what we want. Now we're gonna come in with a bit more oil. So we've added a couple of splashes more oil so that we can get a grilled effect on our vegetables. Also, the sauce is nicely concentrated, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And then we have taco seasoning, which is really something you can do at home. It's a combination of chili powder, onion powder, oregano, cumin, and we need about a tablespoon of that to grill our veggies. And now we're gonna go and start stirring. And you want your, your heat to be on high, so you don't end up boiling these vegetables in the, their own juices. And now, once you've cooked your vegetables to the preferred dampness, you're gonna go in with your meat. And this is perfect for meal planning. Both components are cooked. So actually turn the heat off. We're ready to serve. Now this is perfect also for meal planning. Now let's serve our fajitas on. Today on the menu is a simple yet decadent pepper steak paired with rice. It is family approved. My children absolutely love it. You and your family are also going to just totally fall in love with this simple yet decadent recipe. I cannot wait to get started, but before we continue, I know you're already loving this video, so why don't you give me a thumbs up? Your girl is trying here. You need to encourage me <laughs> to keep bringing you some more good stuff. So give me a thumbs up and let's continue. First, let's wash our hands. To begin, let's quickly go over the ingredients. I have some fresh produce here. I have a green and red bell pepper. I also have one large onion three cloves of garlic, about half the size of my thumb ginger peeled, 
Now I will be creating a glaze like effect on my meat today and for that I'm going to be needing some honey. This is pure organic honey. I also have some oil and this is my cornstarch and I have my chicken seasoning crushed black pepper and some soy sauce. This is a combination of light and dark soy sauce. And of course we can't make pepper steak without the steak so the steak is representing the flank cut of the steak and it is very tender when it is stir fried. So it's the best option for stir frying by the way. And as you can see, the strands of the muscle are going in a horizontal direction. So to slice it, we're going to slice it against that direction to get really tender melt in your mouth cuts. First, let's prep our vegetables. The time has come to layer our flavors and marinate this meat and get that part going. So I have my meat all ready and cut into very thin slices. They're going to be juicy and melt in your mouth and you're going to cook with really beautiful crusty outer layer. I have some crushed black pepper and it's really coarsely crushed just now. Just before I started cooking I like to do that because you get the most flavor. And then here is my soy sauce. I'm going to use half of the entire amount. I have my chicken seasoning, cornstarch, half of the entire amount again. We're going to create a slurry, so I'm going to use part of it to create a slurry. Here is the honey. Last, but certainly not the least, is our oil. This is olive oil. Let's not forget our ginger and garlic. We'll leave half to prepare the vegetables. Can already tell this is going to be very flavorful. Nothing better than fresh garlic and fresh ginger combination on top of a meat like this. You know your stir fry is going to be 
Mm, so, so good. For the slurry, we're going to need some water, cornstarch, a little bit of crushed black pepper, and our soy sauce. The remainder of the soy sauce, that is. And whisk to combine. Make sure that you don't have any lumps of cornstarch in here. This is going to be a delicious slurry that's going to thicken and create a sauce around pepper steak. It's nice and smooth, and we're going to get a really rich color from it. Perfect. So friends, I have a skillet ready to go onto the stove. I'm going to turn the heat on to a medium heat. This is what I'm going to be cooking the meat in. Why? Because it's a non-stick, but it's a safe kind of non-stick cooking ware. So I'm going to cook the meat in it first, transfer it, and then cook the vegetables, and then we'll combine it with the slurry. A small amount of oil. Bring it to a pipe and heat level, and then we'll place the meat in it. We're gonna get a really beautiful crust. Here we have it. Our steak is ready, it's glossy, it's juicy, and it's absolutely flavorful. I wish you were here to really smell the aroma. So that portion is done. Now let's work on our vegetables to finish cooking this pepper steak. remainder of the ginger and the garlic mince. Crushed black pepper. And a little salt. Fresh garlic and ginger on fresh produce, such as these peppers, it's a combination made in heaven. Really enhances the flavor of the vegetables. If you don't like vegetables, trust me, cooking your vegetables this way will make you have a change of heart. Now comes all the vegetables. One thing you do not want to do is overcook your garlic and your ginger. You want them to still have that freshness. 
Look at those colors. Oh, so mouth watering already. At this stage, you can cook your vegetables to your preferred doneness. I really like the crunch, so I, I'm not going to overcook my, my vegetables. I also want to maintain the vibrant color, but I eat with my eyes first. I know you all do too. <laughs> to preserve the vibrant color of these vegetables, I have my heat on the highest level. So I'm cooking on very high heat. Now, we're going to add our slurry. Give it a quick stir, because the cornstarch has now settled on the bottom of it. So a quick stir, pour it in, and it's a quickly start thickening. And it comes to glaze. See that? We're done. We're going to add our meat now. Now here comes the meat. sauce. Just a bit of sweetness. And just like that, our pepper steak is done. It's ready. A quick taste. Oh, wow. I promised simplicity and yet decadence, and I think we just did exactly that. There is that slight bit of background sweetness that we gained from adding the honey from the beginning. It is not overpowering sweetness, believe me. It rather enhances the umami. Umami is a savory glutamate um, taste, okay? Uh, and it, it really enhances that taste. Now, there is also the crushed black pepper, which really takes this, these flavors to the next level and not to talk about the crunchiness of the vegetables. You can see it even before you put it in your mouth. Hello there, friends and family. Welcome once again to Nanava's Kitchen. And if you are new to this channel, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for stopping by. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to hit that button after the end of this video or during it or right now. Thank you. Now let's get started. So friends and family, my intention is to share the exciting and delectable recipes I have on the menu today with the most focus on the steak preparation. So my boo and I recently made a trip to the butcher store where I picked up some dry aged T-bone and some ribeye. It's dry aged so you know the meat is going to be extremely flavorful. Now I'm going to be cooking everything outside because God has been generous enough to share this bright and sunny day with us so let's take advantage of it shall we so my fire is almost ready i fan it just like we do in africa and it's ready the charcoal is lit literally and ready to do us the honors of transforming our ingredients into something palatable and here friends let me take the pleasure of introducing our stunning dry aged t-bone cut of steak you can tell just by looking at the color that it's perfectly dry aged and it's going to be full of moisture because it's dry aged. It's going to have a richer, beefier flavor and it's going to be more tender and more buttery in texture. We are ready for this chow down, aren't we? <laughs> so season generously on both sides with your crushed black pepper and your kosher salt. And using your fingers, you're going to pat your seasoning, your salt, and your crushed black pepper into the flesh of the steak. And make sure you also season the sides. No matter what you do, some of the seasoning will fall off. That's why it's important to generously season before you hit that 
hot piping skillet. Just like we did, you hear that sound, you know something great is happening, right? All right, so this is the T-bone. The other two are actually ribeye, and they are not as aged as this one. They're also aged, but not quite as aged. I'm going to be cooking this one into my preferred temperature, which is 145 degrees Fahrenheit, which will result in a juicy and battery medium well T-bone steak. And to do that, you want to cook it two to three minutes on each side. And the secret really is to have that skillet extremely hot, screaming heat. Now, once you flip it, you're going to cook it two to three minutes again, and then you're going to introduce your flavor. So I have my thyme, fresh thyme. I have my rosemary and also the garlic, and then I add the butter. And then once it melts, I start basting it just like I did just now. The butter turned a little brown, but that's even more flavor. Now we are cooking our ribeye. Now this is for the kiddos, so we're going to cook it completely well done. Still, our skillet is nice and hot. Four to five minutes on each side. And we're going to introduce the same flavors with our garlic, the thyme, and the rosemary, and a little bit of butter, and baste it. Now you see that crust that has formed on each side? Yes, that is how you seal in the flavor and all those lovely juices. Without a doubt in my mind, this is exactly how I enjoy my steak. What do you think? Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are. Now once you're done cooking your steak, the next thing to do, which is super important, is to let the steak rest. Avoid cutting into it right away because what will happen is all those juices that you successfully sealed in by searing it with that beautiful crust are just going to run out completely and defeat the entire purpose of cooking it this way in the first place. So we're done. We're gonna let it sit and rest this chow down this throw down yes that steak has been resting for quite a bit so they already see the juices are in there they're not running all over the place we are ready to dig right in friends this was quite an enjoyable day in my family every now and then you want to show them as much love as you can for the love and the support they bring into your life i'm telling you i have the best family in the world hello and welcome to nanabe's kitchen Today, I'm bringing you the first of our beef series, beef jollof rice, going back to my roots, Ghana, West Africa. Now, I have this beef shank here, so you know it's full of flavor. I've already cut it into bite-sized pieces. We're going to punch it with a lot of flavor. So what I love about this recipe is I'm keeping the ingredients really simple. I have first my finely chopped onions. Then we have a tablespoon of ginger paste followed by one habanero chili. I also have one bay leaf, and then I'm going to also add a teaspoon of garlic paste. Then we need to season this generously at this stage. Very important, friends. We also need to add our crushed black pepper. So beautiful people, we have our beef on medium heat for the next 10 minutes. And during that time, it's going to release these lovely juices. Now, because beef shank needs tenderizing, we will go back in and add some water to it and give it an extra 20 minutes or so until it's perfectly tenderized. So here I have these onions I have cut into wedges. 
to perfume the oil as I brown the beef that has now tenderized. All right, friends, how exciting so far. Our beef is nicely browned. Our onions are caramelized. It's gonna become part of the stew, so it's gonna bring so much flavor and, and richness. At this point, we're going to fry these thinly sliced onions. And to the onions, I'm going to add a teaspoon of curry powder. This is homemade. It has fennel seeds, cumin, it has turmeric, ginger. So it is packed with a lot of aromatic spices and we want it to bloom. So this is the perfect time to add it. Stir it in and continue to cook until these onions become perfectly caramelized. Now over here, I have equal parts, a blend of rosemary, thyme, and sage. Also going in, we need to add herbs. That is super important to bring that aroma we all love. Now let me tell you something, baby. This is smelling good. Stir that in and leave it to cook and caramelize on medium heat for the next five minutes or so. Now to make the stew, we're going to need these caramelized onions. Imagine how much flavor these will bring. Then we also have these roasted peppers for the smokiness and that sweetness. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Two fresh tomatoes and blend it up. Now add your blended mixture to the pot. Now see these colors are going to bring you that beautiful, rich red color that jollof rice really requires. In addition, we have our tomato paste, and this is homemade, and it has beets in it. Now, I have that recipe linked below. Now, if you were to use the store-bought or the canned tomato paste, you would need to add it when the onions and the herbs and the curry powder went in so you can fry that canned flavor out. We don't need to do that with this because it is homemade. All right, make sure you stir everything in and then cook for the next 10 to 12 minutes or until you see the oil settling back on the top of the stew. So our stew has fried beautifully and also reduced, almost dry. So now we're going to add the beef broth Perfect. The oil is back on the top after adding the beef broth, so now is a good time to add the rice. Mm. 
they were using long grain jasmine rice. It's gonna be nice and fragrant. Now I'm toasting the rice to force the beautiful sauce into each grain of rice. It also helps it to become really fluffy after it's cooked. So that's a step I don't like to skip. You know your jollof is beautifully toasted when the moisture is cooked out. Just look at that. Just look at that. So now is a good time to add our broth. Now you can use water instead of broth, but I have a whole lot of beef broth I made a while ago. So I'm gonna add that. So how you know you have enough moisture in the jollof rice to cook it fluffy is the grains need to be all coated and the amount of moisture needs to be above the rice, just about a centimeter or half a centimeter. All right, now if you want it softer, then you can obviously add more moisture, but this is perfect. Now turn the heat down to the lowest setting and cook for the next 15 minutes. All right, we have 15 minutes into cooking. We're going to add half a tablespoon of ghee to get a nutty flavor added. Ghee makes it richer and I tell you, it really improves the overall taste of this dish. You would love it in here. If you have it, make sure you don't skip. In order to trap the steam, we place a parchment paper as a barrier between the pot and the lid. Keep your heat down on the lowest setting and we're going to cook now for 30 minutes. Jollof is nice and fluffy and super flavorful. We've added the beef, now we're gonna just fold it in. One recipe down, another beef recipe coming up soon. Now, today we're making beef curry. For this beef curry, we are using beef shank. We have previously marinated it for one hour with the following ingredients. Salt, crushed black pepper, all-purpose seasoning, garlic paste, ginger paste, shallot onions thinly sliced, and one habanero chili. Let's cook, friends. I'm going to be using ghee for this preparation because ghee is so delicious. It is going to give us a nutty flavor that is absolutely to live for. So that goes in here. And to perfume our ghee, I have cardamom pots, the green kind, and I also have star anise and some aniseed. Just allow these aromatics to bloom. Okay. 
just when you start smelling your aromatics, you want to go ahead and place your meat in. And start stirring to coat your beef with the perfumed ghee. Now you want to allow the beef to get some brown, to sear the lovely juices into the meat. Give it, periodically you want to go in and stir it. Now here I have my curry powder, so that goes in, and this is homemade. I also have some paprika, followed by some chili powder. And to jumpstart that curry flavor, we need a pinch of garam masala. You also need some tomato paste to bring us the much needed sweetness. This one has beets in it. I made it here at home. I'm going to add the remainder of my ginger paste and garlic paste. Stir that in also. Look at the sauce forming around it. It tastes so good already. It's perfectly seasoned, so make sure you're seasoning to your preference. Now you do want to allow your spices to bloom and cook out the graininess from them and also allow them to become part of the beef. You want to do this on medium heat for 10 minutes and we are just there right now. Now next thing we're going to add is some yogurt. This is plain yogurt. The yogurt may be substituted with coconut cream or coconut milk. If you're going for that coconut curry flavor, it'll be luscious in here. I chose to use yogurt this time because I need the enzymes in the yogurt to help break down and tenderize the beef shank due to the location of this cut of meat, which is in the lower extremities of the animal. It tends to have a tougher texture. Next, we're going to crush these shallot onions. Previously, I thinly sliced them and fried them real crispy. While they were air drying, they became even crispier. So they will impart a beautiful sweetness to the curry. There are many variations of curries. A uh, curry is really a sauce made with aromatic, warm, inviting spices. And as you have seen in my previous videos, my curries usually tend to have that signature yellow color. However, you see a deeper, more enriched color here because of the addition of the chili powder and also the paprika. Now, do not let that throw you off because the flavors here are rather deepened even more. I think you will totally love it. Now, we need a braising liquid to break down the muscle of the meat to make it nice and tender. I have some homemade beef broth here, so I'm going to use that. Water will also be perfect for this. Remember, water is a diluting ingredient, so if you choose to use it, check for salt and adjust accordingly. Now this consistency is perfect. It's enough braising liquid to thin up the sauce and also to help tenderize the meat. All right, beautiful people. So Sister Madame has completed her part. Now I need to leave this pot to do its thing. All right, it's gonna take about 45 minutes for the meat to braise slowly and tenderize to perfection. We'll come back and check in 45 minutes. And as it turns out, it took 50 minutes exactly to braise this to perfection. 
Now take it all in. Let us just admire this richness happening right now. It is offering us lusciousness, velvety sauce around the meat, and just look at how tender and also juicy this beef shank has become. Please give your girl a thumbs up because this is a job well done. And I know you're inspired to try it. You will not have any regrets at all. We chose to serve it today with some steamed basmati rice. And let me tell you, it went down the way it was supposed to. We cleared the entire pot of stew that same day. Hello there and welcome to the Novice Kitchen. Today we're making a very simple yet absolutely tasty steak fried rice. Let's get into it. Cut your steak into cubes. First, trim the fat off. Use a steak cut that you like, so your favorite, and also make sure it is tender when cooked and it's juicy. I'm using sirloin. And I suggest in a fried rice recipe to cut your steaks into cubes or dice them as opposed to slicing them thinly. So that way when they're cooked, you're able to sear in those beautiful juices, ensuring that each bite will have that juicy steak bite. Season with your salt and crushed black pepper. Cornstarch. Light soy sauce, about a tablespoon. The purpose of the cornstarch is to help sear in the juices in these small steak bites much sooner. Drizzle a little bit of cooking oil on there. The cornstarch helps each steak bite to stay juicy, especially when it comes into contact with heat. While the steak marinates, let's finish prepping. We'll chop up one medium to small red onion, and you can use any onion you have on hand. Just chop it up finely or not, it's up to you. It's your food. Make it the way you like it. We also have some scallions, chop those up as well. We will use that as garnish, so we'll chop up the white and the green. And for this recipe, we'll need five whole eggs. When prepping your eggs, best practice is to crack each egg one at a time in a separate bowl before adding it to the bunch, just in case an egg is bad. All right, so for this steak fried rice, we need very few ingredients because it's a very simple recipe. We have our frozen peas and carrots right here. They've thawed nicely. And I also have my overnight rice. This is jasmine rice, just steamed with some salt and stored in the fridge. We also have our ginger and garlic mince, about a tablespoon of that. We've chopped up some scallions. These are four scallions I chopped. One small red onion that I also chopped. And I have five whole eggs here, which I will be seasoning with some vegetable bouillon. We're done prepping, now let's cook, beautiful people. Cooking oil, butter. Yep, I said butter. Butter will do our eggs some good. Add the eggs. I'm going to give the eggs a quick and tender scramble. And we're using medium low heat to achieve that. We want our eggs to be tender. So we're cooking them fast and yet on gentle heat so they do not become rubbery. Just before they solidify or set, remove them from the heat immediately. So transfer them from the wok into a bowl, just like so. Next, we're cooking our steak, so a little oil into the wok. The heat is now on high heat. See that smoking? Yes, that's what gives you that wok kissed essence. That's what we're going for. So the steak goes in, spread them out, and leave them to cook at least a minute to two minutes on each side before you stir it. Remember that these are small steak bites, so you don't want to overcook them or they'll dry out. We still want them to be juicy.
ginger and garlic. Butter. Peas and carrots. Optional crushed pepper flakes. Vegetable bouillon. Salt. Crushed black pepper. Stir. Day old rice. Soy sauce, a little bit of oyster sauce, just a little bit, a dollop. Eggs. Now we've combined all of our components. Once the beef goes in, just stir it in to combine and that is all she wrote, friends. The beef, you do not want to overcook. Sprinkle your scallions on there for garnish. Turn the heat off, really. You don't need the heat to cook the scallions because we still want the crunch from the scallions. And that is all she wrote, friends. We're done, let's serve. Now, Fried rice, just like any fried food, has the tendency to be dry. But that isn't what we did here today, friends. We achieved that moist feel in your mouth. Let's prove it. If you're able to pack your fried rice into a bowl and then flip it onto a plate and it stays together like that, you achieved a moist and tasty fried rice, friends. We did it. I hope this recipe inspires you to try making your own better than take out beef fried rice at home. Thanks so much for watching. We're making beef biryani using beef short ribs. It's going to be so delectable, friends. Let's start. The secret to a delectable pot of biryani is lots of caramelized onions. So let's caramelize these thinly sliced red onions. And it is imperative that you slice the onions really thinly so they can fry sooner. And the oil I'm using is avocado oil because it can take on high heats without becoming toxic. You can also use vegetable oil for this. Now you fry until they become golden brown and take them out and, and then proceed to fry the next batch. It is a good idea to fry them in batches. Now when you take them out, you want to place it in a bowl or a sheet pan that is lined with a paper towel in order to absorb the excess oil. That will help those onions to also become um, crispy as they air dry, which is exactly what we're going for. Perfect, all done. Next thing is to prep our short rib. Now what I'm gonna do is sprinkle a generous amount of equal parts salt 
and crush a black pepper onto it. Very important to pat your salt and pepper into each short rib, making sure it's coating all the sides. Because the next thing we're gonna do is sear these meat pieces. Now I'm going to drizzle some of this oil we fry the onions in to sear the beef. Just a shallow film of it will go a long way. And leave a reasonable amount of space in between each short rib. Practice social distancing, otherwise you're going to end up developing moisture. We don't want that. When searing, you need to lock in those juices. The last thing you want to do is to place them too close to each other because when that happens, it means you have overcrowded the pot. They will start releasing those juices you're trying to lock in. So you don't want to defeat the purpose of searing in the first place. Searing also improves the overall taste in the end. So it's one of those win-win situations that I always aim for. Now you want to sear it three to four minutes on each side or until you see a lovely golden brown color formed and also a crust that is hard to break into. And that crust is that seal that locks in those beautiful juices. That is a perfect color. And then we also add searing must occur on a medium high heat. You cannot just use regular medium heat or low heat, it won't work. Those juices will run out. Next thing we're going to do is to prepare the meat sauce because biryani is a two component dish. It's a rice dish and a meat sauce. So in the same pot we seared our beef, I have these thinly sliced onions I'm going to throw in. And I'm going to be introducing my homemade chicken bouillon. You can use the store-bought beef will be preferable. Throw that in there. And you know what's also good in here is a fresh chili flavor kick. I used serrano chilies, which I finely minced. And that just went in. Here is my homemade curry powder, which has turmeric, ginger, cumin, coriander seeds, fennel seeds, which are all part of those warm spices you must have in your biryani. I also have a pinch of nutmeg. We're going to stir all of this in. You also need about a quarter teaspoon of crushed black pepper. Now at this point, I'm going to also add some garlic paste, followed by ginger paste, some paprika, now you're going to stir and also add some freshly chopped tomatoes. We also need the juice of half a lemon or lime. Squeeze that in there. A sprinkle of fresh coriander leaves, also known as cilantro. Stir that in. I have one stick of cinnamon, two bay leaves, two star anise, and I also have eight green cardamom pots. So we are cooking on medium heat, by the way. I'm going to add 
this plain yogurt. You want that in there. That's going to help create a velvety feel in your mouth. It will also help to break the meat down further and make it nice, juicy, and melt in your mouth. Throw that in. Now introduce your meat pieces. And this time around, they can get friendly with each other. They can touch each other, no problem. No social distancing required here. Because at this point, what we're going to do is braise, which is gentle cooking in moistened heat over a prolonged period of time, which will cause the meat to be tender and melt in your mouth. And add just a little bit of water to thin the sauce up. And the water also becomes your braising liquid. And a splash or two is sufficient. You don't want your sauce to be too thin like soup. And your braising liquid could very well be a broth, such as chicken, beef, or vegetable broth. However, this pot is already overloaded with a ton of very good flavors. So I can safely say water is perfect for this. Now I also caramelized some onions in the beginning. I'm just going to throw a handful of it in here because it will bring a depth of flavor we would love and appreciate in here. Submerge your onions and cover the pot to cook gently on low heat for the next 40 minutes. The rice of choice for any biryani dish is basmati. And you want to get the best quality basmati rice you can get your hands on. Friends, we have come to the point where we need to cook our rice for our biryani dish. And for that, we will need some water that has come to a boil, and we need to season it generously with some salt. Now, this amount of water is about three times the regular amount you would need to cook rice or steam it into a fluffy state. What we're doing today though is we're parboiling the rice. So you would need more water than usual. Now here is some of the oil we fry the onions in. Just a little bit to flavor the rice up. Yes, beautiful people, you can throw flavor even at parboiling your rice. You sure can. Your sister, madame, just showed you how. There are so many other flavors you can add, but you know the sauce is already extremely flavorful. So what you're looking for, by the way, is your rice grains. As you parboil them on a high heat and all this water that's seasoned well is the rice grains, you want them to have a translucency on the coating of them, all right? So the core is going to be opaque. And you'd confirm this by taking one rice grain and breaking it open. And once you've confirmed it, you're going to drain it immediately and set it aside. The sauce has been cooking or braising for 45 minutes, so it's perfect. The meat is tender, almost falling off of the bone. And here I have some saffron going into some hot water to steep and you see how it immediately releases its yellow color. So this is going to be our natural way of arriving at that two-tone signature biryani color. So some of the rice grains will be pure white and then some of them will be yellow. Now saffron is a spice that comes from the flower of Crocus sativus and it has a floral fragrance to it so that's really lovely i have poured the rice onto the, the beef sauce and also drizzled on the saffron juice now i'm adding the fried crispy fried onions next you want to trap some of the steam but you want to use a barrier that is breathable lintless paper towels work perfectly or a clean kitchen towel will work as well the reason why the, you need it to be breathable is so that the rice becomes this fluffy all right they don't stick to each other at all and they just kind of fall off the fork with much ease and at this point that opaque core is also cooked perfectly through here is your biryani 
being served party style. Just like in West Africa, you will not go to a really lit party and not find your jollof rice. Well, same applies to most East African countries. I know for sure Tanzania and Kenya, uh, the ones I'm actually referencing here, biryani is representing it. That party is going to be lit. All right. Just like so. And I sprinkle on some fresh cilantro or coriander leaves chopped. And then I also sprinkle some of those crispy fried onions. And you can, by the way, substitute the saffron with a potent carrot juice or turmeric steeped in some hot water. And I left some ingredient substitute details in the description box. Below. Oh my goodness gracious friend. Hello friends and family. Welcome to Nanaba's Kitchen. Today's menu is beef sauce and it's very common to find this dish at most Ghanaian parties because it's so easy and quick to make and the flavors are such a hit. In fact, it was served at my brother's wedding among other sauces like chicken sauce and other dishes and everybody absolutely hands down loved it. Now also my mom made this quite a bit when we were growing up, especially on Sundays and she would incorporate curry powder into hers and also thicken her sauce with noodles quite a surprising factor right but it turned out so gorgeous and delicious and made us all very happy today i'm presenting my version now friends i'm not gonna tell you that this incredible dish is capable of getting you on that second date closing that important business deal down for you and even possibly getting your nagging mother-in-law to calm down a notch and show you some love let's get cooking friends so i I have my beef cuts here and these are the rib cuts without the bones and I just cut them across the grain really thinly so that they cook nice and tender and juicy. Now I'm also going to prepare a spice mix. I have granulated garlic, ginger powder, granulated onion, black pepper crushed, white pepper crushed, thyme powder, parsley, dried and anise seed. All of them are a teaspoon each. Now let's prep some fresh produce. We have a variety of them. We're going to prep them all starting with the serrano chilies. Now the serrano chilies when cooked, although they have some heat and will bring that necessary kick to the dish, when it's cooked, it brings down the heat level quite a bit. So keep that in mind, but you may omit them. I love the fragrance that it brings to the table. Now we're also going to incorporate some scallions and we're only going to prep the white part for now. That's the part we're going to cook. And then we'll reserve the green part for garnish later on. Your pot needs to go on medium heat and incorporate the oil of your choice. You know I love my cold pressed coconut oil for that extra flavor, so that goes in first. And then I add my prepped ingredients and a little bit of salt. So sweat these ingredients and to quickly perfume the oil with their fragrance. So there we go. You want to cook this for about two minutes and then incorporate your meat. You're also going to incorporate your spice that you pre-measured at this point. And then you're going to stir this very thoroughly to get all your ingredients evenly incorporated. Now friends, at this stage, you may incorporate your stock cubes. However, I found this better than bouillon organic chicken base. And friends, what this does to your dish, if you can find this, please incorporate it. Oh my gosh, it takes the flavors up to the next level. And it's minus any artificial flavors, minus MSG. It is so safe to cook with and it's super delicious. So I incorporated one tablespoonful of it and uh, mix it in and cover the pot and let it cook for 20 minutes, by which time the meat will be completely cooked through and ready for the next step. While that's going on, we're going to prep the rest of our vegetables. And feel free to use any vegetable of your choice. I love a lot of color in my cooking and carrots are one of the world's most pigmented vegetables and also very nutritious for you. So I cut them into thin slices like that, thin strips more like that. 
And I'm also going to be incorporating some bell peppers, green, red, and yellow. I love the fragrance it brings to the table and also the color and the nutrition as well. Again, cut them into any size, any shape you want. Now my onions are white onions, but you can use any kind of onions you want. And I also prepped some green beans, and this here is mushrooms. And what you do to clean them is just wipe them off with a damp kitchen towel or paper towel. Now, it's been about 20 minutes, and our meat is completely cooked through. It's nice and tender at this point, so we are going to be tasting for salt or seasoning and if you don't have enough salt in there this is a time to introduce some salt you want your dishes to be always well seasoned not under seasoned and not over seasoned but just there now we're going to add our carrots they th take a little longer to cook so just incorporate them at this point and you see that a broth has been developed and let me tell you that is flavor that is flavor yes we're going to thicken this eventually and just keep watching more surprises your way now cook your carrots for about two to three minutes to get them to tenderize a little bit and then incorporate your mushrooms the mushrooms go in also now because they impart this earthy flavor which really deepens the meaty flavors in this dish and it's so beautiful and gorgeous it's super flavorful so that goes in and you cook another minute and incorporate your string beans or your green beans that you've chopped up just get everything well mixed in you're still cooking on medium heat perfect now friends, our flavorful broth that has been formed around the meat needs to be thickened. So to do that, I'm going to be preparing a roux. So I have two, three tablespoons of butter that I'm melting and I'm going to incorporate one heaping tablespoonful of all-purpose flour. Any flour would work for this. So I cook it until I have a tan color that's formed just like that and incorporate it. That shouldn't take more than three minutes on high medium heat you want to stir constantly though to prepare your roux and just incorporate it into the dish and you'll see it quickly thickens your dish up and the butter helps to really elevate those rich flavors and don't worry it's really rich right now but we're going to freshen everything up with our vegetables when you put your roux in you're going to stir it and cook another two minutes and incorporate your fresh produce that you've prepped mix it all in and you are almost done cooking we are about 30 minutes into the preparation at this point and we're almost done here so just get everything well incorporated if your sauce seems to be too thick, you may always incorporate some broth or water. It's perfect for me, so I just leave it like that. Still cooking on medium heat, friends. Now, friends, you let your vegetables cook for about a minute to two minutes, not exceeding two minutes. You don't wanna overcook your vegetables. And the green part of our scallions that we reserved in the beginning, we chop them finely and finish off the cooking with it. Just look at this gorgeousness, this beautiful dish. We served it with some rice, what a hit on my dining table. My children were so happy. It brought me back so many great memories from when I myself was a child. Just look at that. I hope you try this quick, easy, and yet flavorsome recipe and let me know what your feedback is. So now it's served. It's on the dining table and our family was Digging in like nobody's business. Here goes my first daughter. Helping herself. Yes, yeah, some sauce. Oh, it was delicious. We had a lot left over. And I just used my food saver and packaged them and put them into the freezer. We can use it on another day. Just look at that. 
Are you not inspired to try this recipe? I hope you are. I cannot wait to hear from you after you try the recipe. This is mine. And yes, yes, the cook deserves to eat too. <laughs> It is beginning to get cold, even where I live, where it is mostly sunny and hot. So, you get to thinking of what you can eat to warm you up from the insides. Beef stew, a hearty one, is the best route to go. It's all I can think of right now. So, friends, I am bringing you my hearty beef stew loaded with vegetables. Let's get into it. Here I have some stewed beef poured on some lorry seasoned salt followed by some crushed black pepper, freshly crushed. I'm also adding some all-purpose flour to it. Coat the beef pieces well and get it ready for searing. Friends and family, beautiful people, greetings, blessings, much love to you all. A very warm welcome to Nanaba's Kitchen. So my brazier pan is on the stove on medium heat to start. That is ghee, which is clarified butter, and I'm going to allow it to melt. And then the beef pieces are going to go in. And you may substitute the ghee with regular cooking oil, but I find the ghee brings that flavor. And you know how I like to layer my flavors. So spread it all out and allow it to sear on medium heat. You may crank the heat up if you need to, but I start on medium heat because this is a cast iron enamel brazier, and so it really retains a little bit of heat and maximizes it. After spreading the beef out in the pan, allow it to sear for about two to three minutes before you begin searing. Your goal is to sear on all sides to lock in those juices. Our beef is perfectly seared on all sides and we have our mirepoix ready, all diced into the same sizes. We start with our onions, carrots, followed by our celery. So we're done with our searing of the beef. We're now layering the rest of our ingredients into the braiser. The next thing we're going to do is brace the ingredients over low heat for an extended period of time until everything is nice, juicy, and also tender. Next ingredient is our tomato sauce. And that has liquid, so it is going to help start deglazing the pan. So stir that in, in order for the tomato sauce to reach the pan on the bottom to start lifting off all those stuck bits of goodness over there. I chopped up one jalapeno chili, so that goes in. And then I am also going to add three cloves of garlic. I'm going to crush it directly in. Now you're going to stir it in. We're still cooking on medium heat. And as you can see, this brazier could use some deglazing and that is going to be happening pretty shortly here, so keep watching. I am adding some mushrooms because I love mushrooms and I also really appreciate the uh, earthiness they bring to this pot. I've added some salt and some more crushed black pepper and one sprig of fresh thyme. You can use uh, half a teaspoon of dry thyme without a problem. Stir all of that in and I have beef broth that's gonna go in right now. And that is going to essentially finish deglazing this brazier. So 
So now we have our braising liquid that has just gone in. We've stirred everything in. We're going to clean the sides of our pan. And when everything is nice and cleaned up, we will be throwing the lid on. But prior to that, we'll add one small fresh bay leaf and the dry will work as well here. We will also be adding a pinch of smoked paprika. I thought it could use that for a little bit of smoky flavor. So just a bit of it is going in right now. And the bottom of the pan is also perfectly deglazed. So the lid is gonna be going on shortly here. And we're going to cook on very, very low heat for about an hour or until the beef pieces are literally melting in your mouth, very tender and juicy. Now here is a sprig of thyme. I have removed the woody part because the leaves have shed into the stew. And it's been 50 minutes. That's all it really ended up taking because the beef is now tender, just as juicy as I would like it. I've also removed the bay leaf. This too is almost done cooking, friends. So I go in and stare and check on things, and it's perfect. I'm going to add a few more ingredients, all right? So I have these Yukon Gold potatoes. These are the miniature ones, and I'm go going to just half them and throw them in, as well as some carrots. So this beef stew is meant to be a complete meal on its own. So adding these vegetables on the end, the potatoes and the carrots is optional if you want to combine it with something like rice or whatever you choose to have it with. However, I really wanted to be able to have it as a, a complete meal on its own. So therefore I added the, the potatoes and the carrots. Adding a final touch of Worcestershire sauce. And we're going to cook all of this so that the potatoes and the carrots cook through and become tender enough but not mushy and that should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Beef stew is ready to serve but before that we're going to garnish with the finishing touch of fresh parsley and we're going to serve shortly. Perfect. Perfection, friends. The flavors are simple, yet they feel sophisticated in your mouth. They are very luscious because the beef is tender, it is juicy and rich. Yes, we're serving today with a side of flat naan bread, which we have infused some garlic and some more parsley into. Oh, friends and family, I am hoping that you are inspired to try this very simple yet absolutely delicious beef stew. It is an ultimate comfort food, perfect for the weather as we have it now, cold and needing some warmth. Friends and family, beautiful people, thank you so much for watching. Hello there, beautiful people. Welcome to Nana Best Kitchen, friends. I am excited, absolutely thrilled to present my spicy, rich, beautiful beef fried rice. Perfect for your parties. It packs a punch of flavor, a ton of crunch and color. It is also loaded with a variety of nourishing, satisfying ingredients. Let's jump right in, friends. So this is part of our beef series. Today I am using beef brisket, and I have trimmed a lot of that fat off. I'm also cutting them into long strips along the grain and then turn right around and cut them against the grain into very small bite-sized pieces. We are essentially dicing the meat. Then I transfer the meat into the pot and then I start layering my flavors. Beginning with some onion paste, 
followed by some chopped thigh chilies. And also I have my garlic paste, my ginger paste, and it is time to season. So here comes some crushed black pepper and some salt. You want to season generously so that this meat's flavor will really stand out. I also added some of my homemade all-purpose seasoning, very, very similar to your chicken bouillon. So you can use that, and I've also added a pinch of curry powder, which is a one-stop shop for all the warm, inviting spices you would want in your savory dishes. Fennel seed, cumin, coriander seed, turmeric, ginger powder, just name it, all in there, so. All perfect. right, so it's on the stove of medium heat and I've covered it and I'm going to let it cook for the next 10 minutes. And 10 minutes later, some juices have been released from the meat. It is starting to tenderize. It has absorbed all of those flavors we layered onto it. Now we need to let it tenderize even further. So we're going to need to stir it up and add a splash of water. That will go a long way to help this meat to tenderize. So cover it back up and allow it to cook still on medium heat for the next 20 to 25 minutes. We are cooking beef brisket, so we need to give it time and patience to tenderize so that when we eat it, we actually enjoy the juiciness of it not only would it be tender enough, but it will also have a slight chew to it, which is enjoyable. Now that it's cooked, we're going to separate the meat pieces from that flavorful broth. We're also going to strain that flavorful broth, and not because this is a mandatory step, but just as a matter of preference, I prefer to do this so that my rice, which is going to cook in this broth, can cook without all of that. Um, I would like to call it uh, meat residue. And the meat residue will not be discarded. It will be reintroduced. And I think you'll enjoy the way we reintroduce it. So keep on watching. So in this pan in which I'm going to cook the rice, I have poured in some oil. This is avocado oil. I have added just about a handful of onions, red onions chopped, as well as some Thai chilies. Then I also add my all-purpose seasoning, some curry powder, garlic that has been minced, and also some salt. Stir all of that in and cook for about a minute. And the aroma should be popping right now. Wash your rice, friends. I'm using basmati rice today. Long, slender, elegant grains of rice. I've washed until the water was completely clear. Pour that into your pan and toast it until the rice is dry from the moisture you washed it with, all right? Now, that is also going to ensure that it cooks beautifully fluffy. Now, you're going to add the beef broth, follow up with some water. We're going to need to cook this rice like it's been fried before we even fry it. And we're going to need the moisture to cook the rice because the moisture is what's going to help build the steam that will essentially cook this rice fluffy. You're going to stir everything together to combine and then you're going to cover it with a kitchen towel or a paper towel that's lintless and the lid and turn the heat down to the lowest setting and cook for the next 15 minutes. Go back and retrieve the chilies because they have released their fragrance. You only need the fragrance and that's why I left the heads on. We don't really need much of the heat in the rice. So remove those. Stir the rice and it should be about 50% cooked right now. Cover it back up again with the paper towel as well as the lid and continue to cook on low heat for the next 20 to 25 minutes undisturbed and your rice should be fluffily cooked. See how I'm able to move it around with just the fork and it just moves so easily and elegantly. Like it's not being forced to move. It's just moving with, a, you know, a feathery touch. 
Yes, that's what we want. Now, we're going to cook our fried rice, but prior to that, I need to trim off my corn. This is sweet corn from the cob. All right, and the best way to do this is by placing a small bowl in a bigger bowl and putting the cob onto the smaller bowl and trimming it all right off into the bigger bowl so you don't make much of a mess. With corn kernels running all over the place, who's gonna clean that mess up? <laughs> <laughs> Not I, no. So I have in my wok some oil. I've heated it up and now I have added my beef pieces. And this time around, we're actually cooking on medium high heat. So I cook it until the meat starts to brown and then I'm going to add some Maggi sauce to this. Now this is homemade Maggi sauce with Dawa Dawa. And you may substitute with store-bought muggy sauce, even soy sauce, as well as some fish sauce will go a long way to introduce umami here. And I like to add my muggy sauce later on when I'm actually browning the meats because it creates this very lovely, enjoyable coating around the meats. It gives it a nice color too. And because I've chosen to cook the uh, beef fried rice this way this time that's why I added it when it's browning now this is the meat debris that has gone into this flavorful oil I'm going to cook that till it's toasty and dry and then I'll proceed to add my ginger my garlic all finely minced I've turned the heat down to the medium setting now so I don't burn any of these ingredients because I do not want to develop a bitter taste. I've also added some all-purpose seasoning which is very similar to your bouillons. So you can use chicken bouillon or vegetable bouillon here or even beef bouillon. I've also added my Thai chilies which I chopped up because this is essentially a spicy rich beef fried rice. Follow up with my chopped onions. So I am cooking these ingredients as I add them about 15 to 30 seconds increments, okay? Now, still on medium heat, we haven't cranked the heat up yet. I add my sweet corn, now that is raw, so we need to cook it, but we don't want it to release moisture. We want to just cook it through and let it retain its crunch, its sweetness, and its freshness. So at this point, I have kicked my heat back up to the highest setting. We're going to cook on high heat going forward, friends. And when I add the sweet corn, I cook for a minute and add my carrots. I cook for another minute after adding the carrots. So the sweet corn will bring the sweetness clearly, as well as the carrots will bring some more sweetness and some color, as well as carotene, which is great for your eyesight and for that glow on your skin. Now we also added some black beans. It's an optional ingredient, but I really love it in here. I've also just added some red bell peppers for that sweetness and that pop of color and crunch. Now that, I only cook an extra 30 seconds after I add it. And then of course I taste, because at this point we've added so many ingredients and we want to make sure that we have not diluted or compromised the amount of seasoning we have in there. And when I tasted it, it was just perfect because my all-purpose seasoning does have salt in it. All right, now if you taste yours and you need to add more seasoning, please don't hesitate to do it. Because the last thing you wanna do is eat anything that's bland no fun all right so that's good to go now i am adding some of the rice at first i actually split it the vegetables in two and i'm doing the same with that brown beef because we are cooking the fried rice in two batches as my wok cannot accommodate all of the fried rice i'm cooking today now after adding the rice and the browned beef since both of those are cooked to perfection, we only cook an extra two minutes. Then I follow up with some crunch, some freshness, and also some green with some scallions or green onions, which I have chopped. 
Now, after I add that, I turn the heat off and I serve, okay? I transfer the first batch into my serving platter and do the same with the second and final batch. Do you love these colors or what? I love them. The crunch and freshness from these vegetables, the color alone, they're giving me life. Vegetables are good for you and they are also so, so kind to you. You just have to treat them well. Give them a good treatment and they'll be even kinder to you, friends. Look at the color, the crunch, perfect. I did have to add a little more rice because the rice to vegetable and meat ratio was kind of off on the second um, batch, so just eyeball it. Add your scallions and voila. It is time to dig in and tear it up. It is chop time, friends and family. Thank you so much for watching. I certainly hope that you have learned a thing or two and are inspired to give this lovely recipe a shot. Make it a great day, friends and family, and have fun, especially in that kitchen. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below and don't forget to share the video as well also watch more videos it is chop time and here in anava's kitchen chop time is always yes friends so pull up a chair we are all friends and family here